Bruchem Aboyim. The topic tonight is genetics. Um, again, we're going to approach it from a physical aspect and then from a spiritual aspect. So what, what is genetics? It's something today that people all talk about or are into. So basically, genetics is a study of heredity. Uh, heredity is the passing on of characteristics from one generation to the next. The process of heredity occurs among all living things, including animals, plants, bacteria, protists, and fung fungi. Th through heredity, living things inherit traits from their parents. You resemble your parents because you inherit your hair and skin color, nose shape, height, and other traits from them. On the other hand, you also inherit negative things such as diabetes, heart disease, cancer, high blood pressure, blood type. A gene gives only the potential for the development of a trait. How this potential is achieved depends partly on the interaction of the gene with other genes, but it also depends on the person. For example, a person may have a genetic tendency towards being overweight, but a person's actual weight will depend upon what and how much that person eats, exercises, and so on. So that's basically a bit general overview of the physical concept of genes heredity. In prayer, when we pray, we see that traits are also inherited because we say like in vidui when we confess, to confess for our own sins makes sense, but we also, we say we, we and our fathers have sinned. So why are we confessing for our fathers? What do we have, what, what do we have to do with our fathers? And basically, the apple doesn't fa fall far from the tree. So where do we see this? So it goes all the way back to um, traits that are bred from the ovos, from the forefathers. We see that the forefathers married within the family, that they did not marry outside, they married relatives. And it really wasn't until Har Sinai, when the Torah was given at Mount Sinai, that this was stopped. Up until that time, that we see that um, Cain and Hevel, for example, they married their sisters. The, the brothers, the, uh, f the tribes, married their, those who say they were born as twins, they married their sisters. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, his father Amram married his aunt. These are all unions that are considered prohibited today by the Torah. But up until that time, we were bred. And in fact, it says the Torah was given on Mount Chorev. Chorev is an acronym, acronym for Chesed, Rachmim, and Busha. Kindness, mercy, and modesty. In fact, there's a Gemara that says if someone does not have these traits, that he must follow his heredity back to the Erev Rav, to the mixed multitude. And we see that, for example, the brothers, we know the brothers sold Yosef. How were they able to do such a cruel thing as sell a brother into slavery? They trace that back to their uncle uh, Lovin. Again, a trait of cruelty coming from him, that from, from his daughters. Also, we see that we are called an Am Kasheora, a stiff-necked people. Again, something that was bred into us, this trait that we still have today. Jews are tough and they're very opinionated. Kohanim, that the Kohanim received their heredity from Aaron, from Aaron. Aaron was called an Oev Shalom and a Rodev Shalom, a lover of peace and a pursuer of peace. And we see even today when the Kohanim, when the priests bless the people, they make the blessing only be Ahavo with love. If they don't have love, they cannot bless the people. It's part of the trait, the serenity they, that they receive from their grandfather, from Aaron, a Kohen, from Aaron. Also, we see that the fact that a Ori Mikla, the city of refuge, were only given to the Levium, to the Levites, because within their trait, they were able to be tough enough not to take revenge on a murderer. That if someone was in their city who had killed a relative, other tribes may have a great amount of difficulty allowing that person to be there. The tribe of Levi, this again was part of their DNA, as we see with the eagle, with the golden calf that afterwards Moshe Rabbeinu asked who was for God, all the tribe of Levi came and they even killed out their own relatives because God said for them to do so. Even when the battle came, 
the last battle against Midian, that it says that the 12 tribes had to be forced to go, but not the tribe of Levi, even though they knew Moshe would die and didn't want, but when they had, were tough enough, they had this trait of being able to go against their natures. On the other hand, we see that Yaakov cursed their anger, the anger of Levi and Shimon. Again, a trait that was in that tribe, and that's why they were, tried, we, uh, they were meant to be separated. In fact, the tri tribe of Levi, their portion was throughout the, all the 12 tribes, and the tribe of Shimon, their portion was mixed within the tribe of Yehuda. And both of them became teachers, because in order to be a teacher, especially to small children, you have to have patience. And if you don't, you cannot be a teacher. So all of these things, again, that were bred into the um, tribe of Shimon, again, and Levi, being teachers. The Dovinamelch kings, that we see that the first king of Israel was Shaul. And Shaul was not, he was too kind. The people wanted not to kill all the animals when he was sent to war with Amalek. He didn't kill the animals. He didn't kill Agog, the king of the Amaleki. Why? Even today, Jews find it very hard to fire people. That's why Jews are not found in a lot of high positions, because it's very difficult to take someone's job away, and Jews find it hard to do that. So what do we see with the kingship? Kingship goes through David, King David. Where does King David trace his lineage back to? To Ruth. And Ruth is from Moab. So there is a certain gene bank that came in from the Gentile world. And as we know, where it says that Shaul killed a thousand, King David killed 10,000, that he was considered to be a ferocious warrior. Again, able to, to take on a lion and with his bare hands. All of these things, again, a certain amount of cruelty that comes, again, which is not a Jewish trait by nature. Again, of kindness and mercy. We also see that punishment is given the Torah says, for the third and fourth generation. Why would you be punished on the third or fourth generation? In fact, there is a thing that when it talks about the punishment, it talks al shlishim aribayim. Al is the word that's used. Until. And the question is why the word al? Al has numerical value, a gematria of a hundred. So the third and fourth generation would be Three, every generation being 100 years. The Mishkan, the tabernacles were destroyed after a period of some 400 years. Both temples were destroyed after a period of some 400 years. Once a trait goes for that four generations, it is to, so inbred within the family that then it's punished. Up until that time, God gives that family a chance to change its nature. And in fact, we see in the Mar of Prayer that we say in Hashkivenu, we ask God, Husser Sutton Milfaneno Miachreno, to remove Satan from before me and after me. So basically it means before I do a sin and after I do a mitzvah. But also before me means while I'm on this earth and after even when we when I leave. That if a person puts his traits into his children and they continue to do the same sins that he does, even in the next world he pays the price, even after he dies from before and after. Now, after the Jews were at Mount Sinai, they really complained to God because they were very much a belief in marrying within the family. If you stop and think about it, there's a real logic to marrying sisters, brothers, cousins, uncles, aunts. Because if you have something that's fine, you would think you want to keep that going within the family. So what you're doing is breeding good traits and making them even better. And that God, in his wisdom, saw just the opposite. That in order to break a trait that could be a negative trait, we bring in a wife. A wife is the only part of your family that you choose and the only part of your family that you're not related to. And what that does is changes the spiritual genes and the physical genes. It brings in a new equation. And this way, we're able to go against that nature that is built in within a family. So all of a sudden, that trait of, let's say, anger that a family may have, being tough, now all of a sudden, as we see with um, 
Yitzchak, that Yitzchak was a very kind, pardon me, a very tough individual. So when Eliezer went to look for a wife for him, he looked for someone who would be very kind, someone who would give him the drink and the camels, going over and above, because he was over and above when it came to being a tough individual. In fact, a wife is someone who was called an Azer Konegdo. In Hebrew, that, in English, that translates to mean a helpmate who's opposite him. And the only way that a, a wife can be helpful is by being opposite. Because otherwise, if she is the same, then when he gets angry, she gets angry. Whatever feelings he has, she has, which compounds what happens. Which means that once they start to move in a direction, it becomes a slippery slope and they cannot return from it. On the other hand, if that spouse is different, now the break can be put on. And all of a sudden you have the ability to become, to change that. And that's why God is patient and waits to the third and fourth generation in the hope that those negative traits will be removed, taken out of that gene pool. And positive traits, spiritual traits. Now, we as Jews are so much, these genes are so much that there is a book written by Rabbi, by, uh, Rabbi Shul ben Levi called the Kuzari. And in the Kuzari, it's a story about a king who wanted to f decide what religion to go to after paganism. So he called in a, a religious uh, uh, priest and an imam from the Muslim religion and a rabbi. And he asked them all questions. And the rabbi said to the king of the Khuzars. He said that the, there, are, there are four elements of, of, um, of um, mineral, vegetable, animal, and man. But there is actually a fifth element which is called the Jew. And imagine, if you will, if a dog were to go to a dump and eat out of the garbage and then sate its thirst in a puddle that was alongside the dump, the dog would be fine. If we as people did exactly and ate and drank the same thing, someone would be saying Kaddish for us, we'd be dead. We could not take it, but the dog can live very well. Now we know that surf and turf, that lobster and uh, filet and all the rest of these non-kosher things, you can't say it's not kosher, I mean not, not healthy. Football players look like they're pretty doing pretty well. They're eating all of these things. But on a spiritual level, if a Jew were to eat the exact same thing, it would spiritually kill him. And that's the difference of that fifth level of being a Jew. Again, a different gene pool and a spiritual level that a Jew has, even though we don't see it, that the rest of the world has. Now, just like we mentioned in the physical world, that even though a person may have a genetic tendency, as we mentioned, like for being overweight, but by having a good diet and exercise, you can go work around that and you don't have to necessarily fall into that. Same thing on a spiritual level. Because you have a trait of anger, of honor, whatever it might be, even though there may be a, neg a negative trait within your gene pool spiritually, you, being aware of that, you can work against it and turn it into something positive. As we see the Moshe Rabbeinu, every person is born with a trait, a negative trait, Moshe Rabbeinu was born with a trait of arrogance. Again, a prince in the house of Paro, king of Ethiopia for 40 years, and then the king of the Jews. And the Torah says before he dies that Moshe was ish anamaod, the humblest of all men. He was able to take that negative trait and turn it into a positive. And that's really what we do as Jews. That we hope to take our negative spiritual traits and turn them into physical traits. And as a quick aside, there's also a belief that we have in what's called Tchias Amesim, the revival of the dead, and how will God be able to do that? We never understood as clearly as we do today, kind of a Jurassic Park theory, that there is, within every cell of your body is the complete DNA, the complete makeup of your whole body. We believe that there's one bone in the body of every person that is indestructible. And with God, we'll be able to recreate the, the body out of that one DNA, that one cell that has the genes, the DNA of who every person. And therefore, when the revival of the dead will come, may it come quickly in our time, God will be able to revive all those people that have lived and are worthy of coming back for Tukiyas HaMesim. So we need to know that even though we're born with certain genes, certain desires to move in a certain direction, that does not mean we have to. We as people have the ability to change the program 
and to go against who and what we were created with, that gene spiritually, and just like we, we can go against our physical genes and be a better, healthier person physically and spiritually. God bless you all. Thank you for coming, and have a great Shabbos.